From the heart of the Cape, this is Barnstable Today for Thursday, November 6th. Welcome aboard. I'm Mark Mumford. The fiscal year 2010 school budget tops our agenda today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kevin Friel. Last evening, the town council and the school committee exchanged ideas in a joint workshop session in the town hall hearing room. The projected numbers are a cause for concern with what the school committee reports is the potential of a multi-million dollar gap in fiscal year 2010. Solutions seem elusive and school committee member Tom McDonald spoke about another option to consider. He is followed in this clip by school superintendent Dr. Patty Grenier. We used to get, I believe it was a 50% reimbursement for transportation. That disappeared. That w that's a million dollars. Um, and the other thing is, in relation to what uh, Mr. Murphy was saying, we are thinking out of the box as well. We have a letter going out, I think it's tomorrow, Ralph, to the state to challenge them to see if we can, in fact, review the idea of having a four-day week. You know, I'm not saying academically it's what we would want to do, but I think we have to explore all the options. We have to do business differently to survive in these coming years, and we're willing to look at every option out there to do that. And. Uh, we can find creative solutions to a lot of this, but in the end, there's going to be pain. And we just have to accept that fact. There's going to be a lot of pain. I can't imagine that we're the only community that's going to be asking that question. No, I'm, I'm certain we're not. And, you know, we've got to get the state to begin to not be so rigid and look at different options as well. We are far from the only one. I, I think, Dr. Vinier, didn't you say that the, the state superintendents were, in fact, pushing or asking that question? Uh, the Massachusetts uh, Association for School Superintendents have put forward a, an entire response to the economy from questions about the 180-day school mandate to the unfunded mandates to the needs of um, schools. Certainly in the last round of the governor's cuts, um, I think he he showed his commitment to public education because Chapter 70 was not reduced. He showed his commitment to municipalities, local aid was not reduced. But he, he too can only work with what he has from a revenue position. Toward the end of the two hour plus session, town manager John Klim added a rather sobering postscript to the discussion. Um, the point uh, that needs to be made is that this isn't just like any other year. This isn't just like some of the other fiscal challenges we faced. I was there in 96 when the school uh, department ran into a challenge. I was the state rep at the time. I was the one that got the phone call uh, and, and uh, fortunately we were able to help out. Uh, I was in the State House in 1991 when, when uh, we ran into other financial challenges. And so um, the point that needs to be made, and I think it's, it it's, it's really hits home by listening to the comments of Mr. Murphy and, and, and Mr. McDonald and others and Mrs. Dagwan and, and, and your chair, uh, is that uh, we're not going to solve the problem that we face by some of the Band-Aids that we've used in the past. We just aren't. This, this as clearly as we can state, is a structural deficit. If you don't have new growth and you only can go up 2.5% a year and you're going up 5 or 6% a year or more, uh, you're going to have this type of crisis every year for the foreseeable future until you get an override or something happens at the state level with state aid or something, some other dynamic changes. And so even if and you might wonder, and especially for the general public, uh, municipal employees aren't here tonight. They weren't invited. We didn't realize we would be talking about the municipal budget. But let me tell you something. Uh, the employees that I work with day in and day out are just as concerned and frightened as our school employees are about what the future holds for them. Uh, they would be here tonight. And if we are to talk about uh, so-called redistribution. Uh, I certainly hope that the council would not make a decision on that without giving the courtesy to our department heads so that you can be provided the same type of information that the school has provided you this evening so that you can make an informed decision. The point is this. We need to be creative. We need to think outside the box. We need to think of, uh, uh, for new approaches gentleman in the audience, I think, was particularly articulate in terms of some of the areas that we have to uh, go, go into. Um, but it's not going to be solved by, by you folks saying, hey, guess what, we're going to take $2 million from the, 
and I don't know whether you meant $2 million more than the significant amount we're going to cut next year or whether that was a total amount, but that's not going to – that's a Band-Aid that might help in 10, but guess what? We're going to wake up in 11 and be in the same type of, uh, of uh, situation. Uh, and I wish I could be as optimistic as, as uh, Mr. Murphy and think that this is one or two years. I don't see that. I think it's, it's, it's probably going to be longer than that. And so we're entering a storm here that is unlike – what we have seen in the last uh, 10 or 15 or 20 years. The school committee offered their apologies last night to the eight folks due to be interviewed for the school board vacancy created by the departure of Peggy Dandridge. They said there was not enough time last night for so many interviews, so they are now rescheduled for December. Meanwhile, on Tuesday, while many Barnstable residents were having their say on Election Day, there was plenty of action over at the old Chili site off the airport rotary. That's where Mark caught up with Alicia Parker from the town's growth management department as the crew was taking down the old restaurant building. Well, we're here on a beautiful day in the uh, parking lot of what used to be the uh, Chili's restaurant here right off the airport rotary in Hyannis. We're with Alicia Parker from the Growth Management Department. Uh, Alicia, your specific title in regard to this? I'm the project coordinator for this project. And we see some activity. We see some uh, gentlemen. Uh, it looks like the building's uh, halfway down. Uh, give us a sense of what's been going on and what we can expect to see happening here. Sure, absolutely. The town of Barnesville acquired this property not too long ago. Um, it took some time to get the necessary permits to do the demolition of the structure. Um, and we started, well, they started about two weeks ago. And um, they're, they're going to take everything down. We're going to demolish the whole entire building, take up some of the asphalt on our side of the property. And for right now, what we're going to do is it's going to end up being a green, open green space with some uh, fencing around the area so we um, let people know that obviously they can't drive over it. Um, but it's, it's, it's going to be just a nice open space, which I think will be really beneficial to this area um, of Hyannis. Yeah, it's sort of a dramatic change from what we're seeing now and uh, probably a shock to some seasonal folks who are going to come back this coming summer, but it sounds like a, a vast improvement. Oh, it'll be nice. It'll actually be a really nice um, welcome to the gateway of downtown Hyannis, and, and 132 has a lot of um, projects going on, a lot of landscaping down further, so people will see a lot of different changes when they come onto the Cape next summer. And uh, any time frame you can predict, I guess you're at the mercy of the weather and everything else. Absolutely. The weather definitely makes a difference. Um, the, least, the, last, um, the last date possible would be November 14th, um, and that would just make sure that everything, everything would be raised and all the asphalt would be up. So uh, a couple more weeks and, and we should see nothing. <laughs> you must be excited about that vision. I am. I'm very excited. Um, it takes a long time to get these projects underway, as, as the town is aware and, and the public. They see projects from the beginning and all the way to the end, and sometimes there's some hiccups, but um, it does take some time, and we just have to go with the flow and, and work with what we can work with. So I'm excited for this project, too. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks very much. Well, we'll certainly look forward to it. There they go. Thank you. I appreciate it. Take care. Remember how terrific the weather was on Election Day? Well, not quite as pretty now, but mild at least. Tonight, cloudy, a chance of some showers, and maybe some patchy fog and drizzle thrown in for good measure with temps stuck in the lower 50s. Then tomorrow, cloudy, maybe some morning showers with light winds out of the northeast and highs topping out right around the 60-degree mark. On the meeting front, the town council is right back at it this evening in the hearing room at 7 o'clock. Tomorrow, the Citizens Advisory Committee will be gathering in the Selectman's Conference Room for a 2 o'clock meeting. And just added to the town's website, a well in advance heads up for the Tuesday the 18th when there will be a fee change hearing that will be at 1 o'clock start. And also just a reminder that this coming Tuesday the 11th is of course Veterans Day complete with a morning parade in downtown Hyannis and ceremonies on the Village Green. We expect to have Sid Chase from the town's Veteran Services Department on with us tomorrow to offer up the details. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Kevin Friel. We'll meet you right back here tomorrow. I'm Mark Mumford.